Hello and welcome to the second episode of Mental Health in Sport. Uh, today we have with us Ritu, a head professional at uh, at PBA Tennis Academy. Hi Ritu. Hello Shantanu. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the mental health aspect of professional tennis players. So considering that uh, they are frequently competing and they have uh, a lot of years of tennis behind them, where they have a very good understanding and in-depth understanding of, of the sport. Uh, in that scenario, uh, what is your take on mental health? Uh, how important is it? Uh, and in what ways? Uh, if you ask me about mental health issues, I feel that uh, it is very much real. Um, as you can um, see, you know, recently we had uh, the, one of the brightest uh, female athletes uh, in tennis, Naomi Osaka. She withdrew from the second round of the French Open. Yeah. Um, she said that uh, you know a long bout of depression, anxiety uh, is like you know, uh, is responsible for her withdrawal. And in the past also, we have seen a lot of like professional tennis players uh, going through certain phases of depression, anxiety, yeah. uh, panic attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, one more example would be from 2012 when uh, uh, U.S. Davis Cup captain Marty Fish. Mm -hmm. Um, before his match with Roger Federer, he withdrew um, uh, owing to some panic attack issues. So it is very important for like all of us, uh, mainly the support system of each and every player to understand that mental health issues are real uh, and it needs to be taken care of. Absolutely and uh, as we know that mental health issues and the struggles that athletes face or uh, tennis players also uh, are really, really uh, prominent and quite alarming uh, given uh, the instances of Naomi Osaka, uh, Mari Fish as well. Uh, apart from uh, anxiety and uh, feeling depressed as well, since their journeys and uh, more of uh, the tournaments as well are quite unpredictable and uh, they're vulnerable to any situation uh, in the sense at times uh, they can translate losing matches into wins or uh, the opposite can happen and that can be quite harsh to take. Uh, so, in your experience again, what have what are a few ways that players tend to respond uh, to these uh, roller coaster of situations? Uh, yeah, you very rightly say that uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, in sports person's life. Um, it is like mental health issue is very prevalent in every sport. Uh, but if you ask me from a tennis player's perspective, uh, Tennis is a very tough sport um, in terms of its individuality nature. Uh, it is it is a very solo sport. Uh, the moment a tennis player enters the court, he or she is on their own. Yes. Um, there, I mean, he, he or she cannot be coached. Uh, there cannot be anyone who can replace him if the player is not performing. Um, even they need to stick to the. I mean, uh, 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 stick to the break time yeah. that they get in between the games and points. Um, on top of it, they have got the entire crowd, uh, the supporters um, of them, and also the supporters of their opponent. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is, it is, it is difficult. It is difficult. Uh, I mean, we say that. Um, in fact, we as coaches, we teach our tennis players to be their own coaches mm. uh, because the moment they enter the court, they need to. As Andrea Gassi in his book Open, he said that tennis is an island um, and you are on your own. So you have to take care of your own stuff as soon as you enter the court. Yeah. That's an interesting point, right? Where you're teaching tennis players to be their own coaches. Uh, and that certainly uh, you know, puts them in a positive light where they're able to take care of themselves mentally as well. So since, uh, as we were discussing, there are lots of ups and downs uh, in the journey of a tennis player. And uh, there are multiple reasons uh, which contribute to them playing well and at times them not being able to play well. Uh, of course, there are certain aspects from the physical part in terms of fitness, it could be strength uh, and the technical and the tactical part as well. Uh, but what I would like to get an understanding of from you uh, is what can help tennis players realize that at times the hurdles that they may face um, in competitions uh, are more at a mental and an emotional level? Uh, there can be multiple factors. Um, I mean, if you, if you ask me as a coach, I would break down the factors to three main points. The first one is um, the finances. Mm -hmm. um, 
unlike other sports where you have, I mean, you you go as a team and the entire team is sponsored. Uh, tennis again, like it is, a, it is a very individual sport. And unless and until you reach up to a certain level, you have to take care of your own expenses. And uh, you know, to give you a fact, um, approximately two percent of the professional male players they make money out of um, you know uh, out of tennis yeah. and uh, in female it is about 4% mm -hmm. of the of the at least that they make money yeah. so that financial burden is huge on them yeah. because uh, uh, you know they need to take care of their coaches they need to take care of their physios they need to take care of their mental coaches yeah. now like a lot of years they are traveling with the mental coaches um, so you know and sometimes if their family also you know, yeah. decides to travel along with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so this financial burden is huge. Um, and also with financial burden, you know, they have pressure from their sponsors as well. Yes. Uh, because they will definitely want results. Um, the second point would be, um, you know, the tennis players, they live a very nomadic life. Uh, because they stick to a very tight schedule, they make their yearly plan in the beginning of the year and they stick to those tournaments uh, irrespective of what the results are and results, trust me, like it is either a thumbs up or a thumbs down and also what happens is they go from one tournament to another tournament uh, there's a lot of traveling, so there's a lot of mental fatigue, there's a lot of physical fatigue um, and also, they cannot be traveling along with their friends and family all the time. Yeah. Uh, not not all players can afford it. Yeah. So they travel with a very close team, uh, team their coaches, their physio, their coach. Um, so there there can be a big disconnect mm. from from their family and friends uh, from their hometown. I mean, they miss out on a lot of celebrations. They miss out on a lot of parties. They miss out on a lot of you know, weddings and birthday yeah. celebrations and even uh, you know, younger players in this out on graduations. Uh, so that is a that is that is a big disconnect. Uh, uh, yeah. So and the third one would be the weight of expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone expects them to do better. I think, mm -hmm. Their coaches, their parents, their friends, uh, family. So that 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 weight uh, you know puts a lot of pressure on them. Um, so as I say that it is either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So if you if you win, it is it is it is a colorful story. But if you yeah. lose, then again, you know there there are a lot of questions asked, um, uh, you know, maybe from the fans, uh, yes. maybe maybe from themselves. You know, they start questioning themselves, their ability. Uh, there are a lot of sacrifices naturally that uh, you know these tennis players are making day in and day out. Like you're saying, uh, they are prioritizing one thing over the other, uh, which will eventually you know make them better players and they get more match time and essentially they are going more towards uh, winning matches and, and titles. Yes, Ritu. So as Naomi Osaka research recently uh, has been vocal about how she wants to protect her mental health uh, by not uh, participating in the French Open uh, conferences because of anxiety issues. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think we can be certain that uh, there may be countless tennis players uh, who may be going through different mental health issues uh, at the same time across our country. Uh, at the same time, however, uh, they might not have uh, thought of you know, approaching a psychologist uh, and that, there may be different reasons behind that. Uh, so in your experience, what may be a few stigmas which hold our players uh, in that level back when it comes to really taking a step forward and addressing their mental health concerns so that they know how to handle those different situations and in the long run, uh, it's helping them in the tournament. So let's say eve of the tournament, or it can be even on match day. Um, so this time when Naomi Osaka she withdrew from yeah. the French Open, it, it it opened doors to a lot of discussion yes. um, in social media uh, about mental health issues. Um, so I mean, from a player's point of view, there are certain stigmas mm -hmm. attached to it. Yeah. Um, like you know, be be technical or physical uh, or tactical, um, you know, for the matter. So like you know, those, I mean, these these factors are given priority mm -hmm. over mental health issues, um, and automatically takes a backseat. True. Um, and you know what happens is with 
with players um, when they go through all these emotions, yeah. uh, it is kind of a snowball effect. It it keeps building up, Absolutely. and there will be a point where it'll it'll, it'll explode, yeah. um, which will lead to burnout, um, you know, anxiety, depression, panic attacks, um, and also what happens is, I mean, the players and the player support system, mm -hmm. be, be the coaches, uh, uh, physio, parents, friends, family, they need to understand that therapy is not a weakness. Mm -hmm. So they need to consult, um, you know, a psychologist whenever they face such issues. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of players now they they travel along with their psychologist. Yes. Um, they travel along with their mental coaches. Uh, and even if they don't travel with their mental coaches, they consult with them online um, very frequently. Yes. And secondly, what happens is um, they think what will others say if they, if they go for mental health. Yeah. Um, that is that is a big issue. I mean, if I if I seek help from a psychologist, what will my friends think about it? Mm -hmm. What will my family think about it? Mm -hmm. um, and also, third third um, point would be. Um, like these mental health issues are not visible to our eyes. Absolutely. It is not, uh, you know, it cannot be seen or mm -hmm. it cannot be like you know, quantified. Yeah. Um, so that is one challenge that the players feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is one challenge that the players feel mm -hmm. uh, because it is not visible to their eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. So, uh, as you pointed out very rightly, that uh, a lot of these mental challenges often happen uh, more subtly and how they can transform into reality is often not visible. Uh, we cannot see them as compared to maybe an ankle twist, right? Yes. And uh, at times what happens is uh, the people around uh, the tennis players may also feel that uh, because it is not visible, it doesn't exist. So it's really important for us to understand that uh, while the mental struggles are not really visible outward, uh, the consequences they have are very much visible. Uh, so that that's why it, it makes uh, it is really important that uh, tennis players uh, at that level uh, when they are preparing for tournaments, not when they reach a tournament, but way before that, um, they are talking to a psychologist and discussing how they want to approach the tournament yeah. and what are their thoughts and feelings regarding that. So, so let's shift our focus to uh, the mental health of tennis coaches. Uh, when you have had a really good day on the court uh, in terms of coaching where you feel really satisfied about uh, the work that you have done and what you have added to that player's development. It could be a couple of days but uh, it could also be a few weeks where you feel really motivated, uh, you feel really happy about, uh, about being on the court with those players. Uh, I would just like to understand mentally what contributes to you feeling that way. Yeah, in that regard, what I feel is that it is very important for the coaches um, to feel the connect with the player mm -hmm. because all these players they are putting in so much of effort. Yeah. Uh, they have a certain aim in their life, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the journey is not easy because there is just one goal number one. Yeah. Um, so it is a it is a long journey. Um, so I mean, for us also, it is very important to have a very close connect with the player, sure. understand them very well, and understand each player individually because every player is different from one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, after that, what I feel is that uh, you need to have knowledge about this particular field. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, be a very professional. Um, terms of understanding the psychology of each and every player yeah. but just to have the basics uh, correct uh, and, and the more knowledge you have it drives away fear yeah. Yeah. Uh, after that if you if you ask me for for the coaches it is very important because there is a lot of grinding yeah. happening and it is not that if you, if you are part of an academy um, we are not only uh, taking care of one or two athletes yeah. uh, we are taking care of like you know, so, so many athletes in the academy, yes. and um, which can which can range from high performance players of 20 to 30 players, all the way to the grassroots level players. So, mm -hmm. like overall, we're taking care of like 100 plus athletes. Um, so, like for every course, they spend about eight to nine hours on a daily basis on the court. Mm -hmm. So, it can definitely drain you out. Yes. Um, 
So from from a coach's perspective, it is very important that uh, you know we coaches uh, should should have a very balanced um, uh, life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, in terms of managing maybe hobbies, yeah. um, you know, going out with friends. Yeah. Um, so you know, try to do whatever we can within those eight ten hours that we that we are in the academy mm -hmm. to take out some time from the monotony of the job. Yeah, that's a good point raised, right? Uh, like you were saying that definitely uh, having building a personal connection with the players in terms of understanding uh, where they are coming from, why do, why do they like tennis, what are their goals, and uh, what will help them uh, play better tennis. That certainly helps. And other part also being that the more knowledge you have about the sport as well, about what it takes uh, to to contribute to their growth, that also plays a good uh, amount of role in. I'm sure you feeling motivated and satisfied. Definitely, uh, you know, building a personal connection with the players in terms of understanding their motivations, uh, where are they coming from, and uh, essentially what are their goals uh, when it comes to training with you and proceeding. Uh, that certainly uh, must be helping you uh, be more motivated and feel satisfied at the end of the day. And along with that, as you were saying, uh, the knowledge also of having a deeper understanding about the sport, certainly. So, Ritu, as we have discussed, uh, what mental aspects play a good, positive role uh, in you know, coaches in you feeling uh, satisfied and motivated to be on the court uh, every day? Uh, is there anything else that you would like to our discussion so far? Yes, Shadu. So, from a coach's perspective and from an academy's perspective, I just wanted to ask you, uh, you being a sports psychologist, uh, how can an academy um, help the athletes? Uh, address their mental health issues? Uh, that is definitely the need of the hour where um, the mental health of not only the tennis players but also the coaches and the whole support system is taken into consideration and uh, there is a system in place where uh, we are taking active steps to make it more positive uh, and so that uh, eventually all of us are you know, equally motivated and uh, mentally, mentally we are in a good space. So the first thing that can be done uh, is to introduce players and coaches uh, to sports psychologists uh, through different uh, seminars and through interactions basically where uh, we understand how mental health crucially plays a role and to in a way embed sports psychologists into the academy where players realize and they know that no matter what happens or whether they have had a really good day or they have had a really, really terrible day on court uh, it could be just fitness or it is just practice that they are doing. Uh, so it's really important that players realize that no matter what kind of a day, day they have had, whether it's been a really good day or a week, or whether it's been a really terrible uh, week for them in training or in competition, uh, that they have someone to talk to and explore how their thoughts and emotions of the court, uh, it could be related to academics, could be related to family, personal life as well, how they impact them on the court when they are hitting, when they are actually there. Right? So when they get a realization of how um, all these things are interconnected and they eventually uh, are playing either uh, a good role, so whether they are pushing them in their matches and in their growth or at times they are holding them back. So uh, in this way players can understand that mental health uh, is again a very uh, actionable point. It is something that they can work towards actively by applying different techniques uh, and by talking to a psychologist and then in return getting better and feeling much more mentally healthy. This has been a great conversation with you. It's been really interesting to understand what has your experience and what are your takes on mental health in tennis. So thank you for being here. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks. So in the next episode of Mental Health in Sport, we are going to be in conversation with a sports science profession to understand how mental health plays a role in their work with athletes. Stay tuned.